Hi friends, welcome to Harmony Hills Home and Garden. I'm Jenny and we live and garden here in Baltimore, Maryland, Zone 7. Today I am back again at the driveway fence garden. I've made some decisions about what to plant here and I'm gonna get some things into the ground. Come with me and let's start planting up some more things into this driveway fence garden. Now you may have seen some videos recently where I transplanted a rose bush to this fence garden. And then there was another one where I planted in some creeping phlox and some candy tuft and some daffodils. And then I recently posted a video about the ideas that I have for this entire 60 foot long driveway fence garden. And so based on those ideas, I am ready to start implementing. Now, I'm still thinking about some of the elements, but I have decided I'm going to go ahead and plant three gray owl junipers uh, at regular intervals along the fence, every 20 feet or so down the fence. I'm gonna put one up here in the corner by the stairs and then 20 feet and then 20 feet. And that will give me three distinct sections of gardens that are 20 feet wide. Now in between those um, three gray owl junipers in those 20 foot sections of garden, I'm gonna have each section centered by something climbing on the fence. In this section, the one that I'm already pretty well underway with, this is a can-can rose, it's a climbing rose. It grows up to about 10 feet tall or wide in this case. And then I haven't yet picked anything to put into the second or the third garden sections, but I'm still thinking about those. Um, so today we're gonna to be working on planting three of these. These are the gray owl junipers. So I've got three of these picked up from the garden center today. And the other thing I picked up from the garden center are 18 plugs, landscape plugs of Carex al Albican, Albican, Albacus, Alba something. I'll have to look that up on uh, the computer before I post this video. So uh, on my plan that I shared in my last video, I've got six sections of a poofy, tufty, kind of grassy kind of a situation. And I hadn't yet chosen what I was gonna use for that. And I've decided I'm gonna use the same thing all the way down the garden. And uh, I'm gonna go with these Carexes. Now this is a Carex that is pretty grassy looking. In fact, let's get up close on it. See, it actually does look like grass. Each one of these will grow. It'll send out these grass, grassy blades of sedge uh, that are about a foot long. So the whole plant will be about one to one and a half feet tall and wide as a little mounded puff of green strappy leaves. So I think this is gonna be a nice softness next to the prickly looking junipers. And I think it's gonna be a nice element of repetition down the fence. So uh, I've got 18 of these. I won't be putting them all in quite yet because I don't have the fence cleared from all of the invasive stuff that is here right now. Today's project is to get the three gray owl junipers in. For two of those, it's gonna be um, gonna require some removal of some stuff first. Uh, so we'll get the three gray owls in and then around this one and maybe maybe around this one, we'll put these in as well. Now I'm not really ready to finish the second or the third garden area, because you can see all of the invasive plants that are in here. We've got Vinca Minor, that's these beautiful, beautiful, but very invasive uh, purple flowers at this time of year. We've got lots and lots of day lilies. These are the really common orange ditch lilies, Hemercalis fulva, I believe. Uh, lots of those in through here. Up toward that way, we've got some spiderwort that is native. It can stay from the perspective of not being an, an invasive, but I'm not sure this is part of the design that I want here. We'll see, maybe some of it'll stay, or maybe it'll get transplanted to another section of the garden. Okay. 
down in this section, we have a whole lot of English ivy that needs to be taken out. There is English ivy up on that section too. We also have uh, still the vinca here. And there's some ajuga that I had put in a couple of years ago. It's kind of struggling. Um, so it may or may not stay. I don't know yet. Um, so anyway, as you can see, this whole section right here is the second garden. And it's just <laughs> nowhere near ready to be uh, planting. I'm, but I'm not going to be uh, clearing that until I have the plants ready to go in. I'll clear one little section today to put the gray owl right here. And uh, but that's the only section that I have to um, clear for today's purposes. Now these junipers can grow to be five to six or seven feet wide. Uh, uh, you can keep them smaller though, and I'm planning to keep mine about four feet wide. Right now, they're kind of oddly shaped, all three of the ones that I have. They're wider than they are deep, so that's going to work in my advantage because I'll be able to put them along the fence this way. Um, and I think I'm going to put all three of them about, oh, uh, probably two to t maybe three feet away from the fence. Now that's going to get trickier down on that end because the garden is a lot narrower down there than it is up here. Here we've got about six feet and down there only about four, so... Maybe I'll put it two feet from the fence and that way it'll be even front to back down there. I don't know. We're going to have to play it by ear a little bit. So now I do have some plants up in there that I want to salvage. I'm probably going to need to move those daffodils, move some of the forget-me-nots, and maybe I think that is a um, nepeta little start up in there too. So I'm going to grab my little trowel and rearrange some of the things up in here. It's a bit precarious on this hill. I'm just going to commit to getting my pants all dirty today. I really don't want to fall down the hill, so I'm trying to be smart. These are forget-me-not plants that are get, just getting ready to bloom. I might set them back this year. In fact, I probably will be setting them back by doing this. I also have Vinca up in here still. All right, All right this is a Nepeta. I'll just repurpose this somewhere else. And these daffodils I just put in like a week and a half ago, but I'm gonna move them to a new spot after Juniper is in. Now, I think this is actually a volunteer hosta from the hosta that's up there. So, I suppose I could save these and put them somewhere else. And then we got weeds. If the center of my hole is right here, or maybe right here, for the juniper, I might have to, I'm gonna have to get that out too. But I think this is my goal for the hole. I'm gonna stand back and look and see if that looks good. There's some spider word I'd really like to get out, but it is growing under, under the stairs. So I don't think I'm gonna be able to get it. Okay, I can see now that hole is not in the right spot. It's got to be two feet off the fence and two feet off of the wall. So it's got to come this way. So those forget-me-nots, they can probably stay this year because they're biennial. So these will, these will live under the shrub for this season and then they'll die off and they won't be there next year. So, okay. Before I start digging, let me move these. 
Need to get these into the ground today if I can. Well, I can, it's just a matter of doing it. Two feet off the wall, two feet off the fence. I'm gonna say that's right here. All right, I've got three gallon buckets that I need to fit in here. I think I need to keep digging. All right, I'm gonna try this, see if it's big enough. Plenty big, let me get my fertilizer. Right, this particular shrub is off, off balance as far as where its foliage is. This, the main stem is like right here and all of its foliage is on this one side. So I'm actually, you might think I'm gonna do it downhill, but I'm actually gonna point all the foliage uphill. And then as it grows this way, uh, it'll fill out. That makes no sense. I actually have too big of a hole. Do I? No, nope, it's actually perfect. So I planted the top of the pot level with the front of the slope. So the slope in the back is coming down toward the top of the pot. And I'm just leveling it out right here. And then I'm gonna try really hard to make a bit of a ring of soil around the front so that when I water by hose right now, but by drip irrigation later in the season, the water will stay at the plant instead of just rolling right downhill. I use this method every time I put plant something on a slope. We got a little bit of a moat right here in front of the plant. All right, how's that look? I think it looks pretty good. Yeah, I'm happy with that. I mean, the foliage right now is about a third to a quarter. I mean, yeah, it'll get about three or four times as much foliage on here in the long term. It'll fill in this whole corner. Uh, it'll get about, I think, I think they grow up to about two feet tall, maybe three. But you can, again, you can prune these to keep them in bounds if they start to overgrow where you want them. These will grow up to, I think, six feet wide. I don't want mine to be six feet wide. I want them to be about four feet wide. So I'm going to be working over over the time to make this a uh, roughly three to four foot diameter circle with hopefully pretty fronds of juniper branches coming up like a fountain out of it over time. That's my long range vision for this. So I'm hoping to be able to do that. Okay, that's one in. I got two more to go. The other two require a little bit of clearing first. All right, I want the next one to be right in front of this fence post, two feet off of the fence. So that's about right here. So I really should be clearing all of this vinca out of this section. That's gonna be so fun. I'm gonna leave these fox gloves. I don't think they're gonna hurt anything. They'll bloom in here in a couple of weeks and then be done.
Oh, it's a hosta. I forgot I had a hosta here. Well, I used to have a hosta here. Now I have the remains of a hosta here. I think I've cleared enough for now. I'll obviously have to continue clearing in the future. But for the purposes of planting this juniper today, I've got it. So my post is right here. All right, this is the one that I was saying it was really wide uh, and skinny. So I'm gonna position it so that it's going sideways and that this part is the back and this is the front. Now this one is not on such a steep slope and so the water runoff isn't as significant of a concern as it was on the other one, but I will still try to make a little bit of a an indention here in front to hold the water in in early days. So I know it's really hard to see any difference between that green and this green, but believe me, when you're here, it looks really nice to have this bluish green juniper foliage next to the bulbs and the forget-me-nots and the candy tuft and the phlox. And in the plan, there's going to be phlox on this side as well. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to do candy tuft over here or not, but I'll definitely be doing... Um, Flock, creeping flocks or moss flocks, forget-me-nots, and daffodils down here as well. So I'm really liking the texture. And I'm also liking, if you put it in your mind's eye, you can just envision how in two or three years, these junipers are going to be fuller and richer. They're going to be more fountain-like, and they're going to take up more visual space, more visual presence on this fence than they do on the day of installation. Trust me. All right, and the third one needs to go about right here. So, more clearing. This is native spiderwort, Tritoscantia. Uh, that is, I believe, a spring flowering bulb. That is more spiderwort, more spiderwort. There's a hosta right there. Uh, and then back here, this is more spiderwort. This is the vinca. I think these are spring bulbs. But I think, well, I'll try to save them. Uh, we'll see if I can save them while I clear out the vinca. Maybe, maybe not. We'll see. I might be able to save them, actually. They might be a little beat up, but they'll still be there. Now, the spider work plumps I'm going to try to save because I've got some areas in another part of the garden where I'd like to have spider work. So I'm going to try to dig that out and save it. Yeah, that's a nice clump. That will save really well. That is one of the ditch lilies. I'm glad I got that by the roots. You know, <laughs> I'd like to be able to complain about my neighbor 
and their invasive ivy coming through my fence, but it's me over on the other side of this fence, not my neighbor. Oh well. A little bit more hosta here. All right. Have I cleared enough? My hole's gonna be right here. Spider work can stay for now. I guess some more of this right here. All right. So, I'm gonna leave these bulbs there. I'm gonna put my hole about right here. Spider work, you can stay there for today. We'll clear the rest of this another day. All right. So this one's in, it's, it's a little wild and crazy. It's got kind of a triangular shape. There's a thing going out there, a thing going out here, one going out here. So over time, it'll take on a nicer shape. Okay, there's the third gray owl juniper installed along the driveway fence garden. There's the second one, and there's the first one. And now, I do have a little bit of mess to clean up. I got hostas to plant somewhere, spider work to plant somewhere, and lots of weeds and vinca to toss away. Now I could have just tossed all of these clumps into the compost pile, or actually some of them are going to be sent out in trash because we don't want the vinca or the ivy in the compost. But I decided to save some of these clumps of hosta and spider wort, and so that meant trying to pull out the vinca and the ivy and some other weeds out of the root balls. So I just sat down on the driveway and had a good old time just separating out these roots and clearing out the weeds and it, it was just kind of a zen moment. And you know, you find your fun where you can in gardening, right? Now that I've got all those junipers in the ground, I need to uh, at least plant these daffodils uh, and hopefully also find spots for these forget-me-nots that I had dug out so unceremoniously. I think this daffodil needs to come up here along the back, which requires more silly goat behavior. There we go. All right, I think I want it right here. That's nice, mixing in with the rest of things. And then those forget-me-nots I'm gonna do down on the lower bit where I don't have to climb. So in the plans that I drew up and posted in my recent video, I had shown that I was gonna put some homestead purple verbena along here. What do you guys think of that idea? I haven't bought them yet, but I love that plant and I feel like this might be a great spot for that. Like I said before, these forget-me-nots will bloom and then die, and then new plants will grow for next year. So these don't have to be put in places where... Uh, what I mean to say is I don't have to leave space for things that I still want to plant in here. That's, okay. I don't have to leave space here because these aren't going to be here in a few weeks. Now these may not even do anything, especially this poor nepeta. Where should I put this nepeta? Maybe I'll put this in a pot and figure out what to do with it later. These may or may not live or die here. Well, <laughs> they will either live or they will die here. 
Uh, they may not flower. I don't know. They, if they wilt and die, at least I tried. Okay. So let me get that tag off of there. It's bugging me. Uh, all right. So I got the three gray owl junipers in that required taking out some of the invasive ground covers. Um, and I am a little bit tired. It is cold and brisk out here. Uh, I think I'm going to wait for either more energy or warmer weather to continue. I'm going to be planting those 18 plugs of Carex albanicus, albicus, alba, I don't remember. Anyway, I'll be planting those plugs of Carex in groups of three on either side of each of these gray owls. I'm going to have one group of three on this one, but then the other two will have three on this side, three on the far side, and so forth. So 18 total uh, plugs of Carex that will be added to this mix here. And then I need to decide what to do about, am I doing Purple Homestead Verbena here, or um, am I not? And if I'm not, what else am I going to do? I still need slope management. Uh, the Carex will help with that. The Phlox will help with that. The Candy Tuft will help with that. Um, and so I need to finish out that plan. So leave a comment down in the comment section down below. Let me know what you think of my plan that I posted last time for Homestead Purple Verbena here, plus some creeping sedums and maybe some ice plant, which are plants I already bought. I am rambling at this point. So I'm not quite done with this bed, even this whole section here. Uh, obviously more plants to stabilize the slope, but also this season, I'm pretty sure I'm gonna need to put some mulch up here. Uh, these plants aren't gonna grow in and touch each other this season, maybe not even next season. So I'll be getting some shredded hardwood bulk, blah, triple shredded hardwood bark mulch to uh, put up here. It'll help retain moisture and it'll help keep weeds away and it'll help maintain the uh, soil from sliding down the hill during the season. Also, I'll be putting drip irrigation on the new shrubs at least, maybe on the new perennials as well. Long term, hopefully nothing here will need drip irrigation except maybe the rose. Um, everything else I'm selecting is drought tolerant after they're established, but this is the first year for a lot of this stuff. So um, drip on it for this year, yes, maybe next year, don't know after that. So uh, I've got to start going on here and more work to come. But uh, anyway, I would love your feedback about the plan that I had posted and what you think of that. I hope that you enjoyed what you saw today and I hope you're having a good time wherever you are. And I will see you again in another video soon. Thanks friends, bye-bye.